My boyfriend lives in a home with his two roommates who are both into the occult, as am I. But one's a Satanist and one's a warlock and I'm a witch. I don't live there. I'm a good witch though. I've always thought the energy in this house was a bit weird and off. I feel things and I'm a huge empath. So I know for a fact now that I was not wrong. My boyfriend always talks in his sleep, so when I heard him talking last night, I thought nothing of it. Instead of ignoring it like I usually do, last night I decided to listen really hard and pretend to be asleep for a while. Then I heard another voice asking him questions in a whisper tone, and I heard him very clearly answer the questions he was asked. I even heard the other person say, who is she? And my boyfriend responded, the girl I thought ghosted me, but she didn't. And they had a few words, then I continued to play sleep just to figure if I was truly losing it. Then I heard, she's not asleep, you know. And I felt my boyfriend kind of look over at me and lean to check to see if I was asleep. My back was facing him. And I heard my boyfriend respond, yeah, she is. And the person said, she's not. Then I got goosebumps all over. I waited a few minutes and then jumped up and started grabbing my things. My boyfriend immediately woke up and asked where I was going. And I broke down and told him what I had heard and that he had no recollection. We saged his home and I did some cleansing in his house and the nightmares and sleep talking ceased. Until... Yesterday we went to the Kanye West show and honestly it was just one big ritual of darkness. He literally had satanic altars everywhere. That night we went home and went to sleep. I woke up to him making this weird noise over and over, which sounded like a moan or scream, but not loud. I woke up and told him to shut up. He wakes up and says, the devil showed me everything, he showed me. We got in a fight and I immediately left. He's then since been texting me, saying I should die. When I was six-ish, I woke up by a ghost. Male, late twenties or early thirties, brownish hair, tall and slim. He wanted me to leave the house with him, but it was the middle of the night and I told him that I would be in deep trouble if my parents found out. Then he showed me a vision. It was like a movie playing between the living room and the hallway. He showed me how he was participating in satanic rituals when he was alive and that they even sacrificed goats, or at least one goat was present. Then I saw two of my uncles very sick and emaciated. Those uncles have never been abusive towards me, and we had a normal or good relationships. It shocked me, but it even sh more shocked me when they were having sex on the altar. At age six, I didn't know anything about sex, but I did know that it was something forbidden, that I wasn't supposed to see it. Then my uncles turned into that guy and maybe another guy, I mean those guys participating in satanic rituals having sex on an altar with a ghost and another guy. Today, I think the ghost was having sex with a close relative. Then the emaciated and very sick guy, who was the ghost when he was alive, talked to me. Can't remember what. I was like crying about his situation, how very sick and emaciated he was. At that point, my six-ish me got really terrified and I told the ghost that I didn't want to see anything anymore. I even thought that the guy was a monster and I ran back to my bedroom and hid under the blanket with my back facing the door. I heard how the ghost walked to my bedroom, entered it and I was praying to God to save me. Then I felt something very cold running down my back, as if an ice cold hand was stroking my back. Then suddenly all was over. I finally cried for my mum and to my surprise she said that she woke up knowing that something was wrong with me and that she couldn't move or call for me for quite some time. Of course, my dad said it was impossible that a stranger entered our house, and that he got into my room unnoticed. Today, I think that guy was very sick and desperate, and so he did participate in satanic rituals to escape death, and after he died, he was too afraid to enter the afterlife in fear of the judgments he may face. Or maybe he's always been a member of satanic rituals. I don't know. Two weeks after starting a new job, I discovered that an employee had passed away. 
I didn't get to meet him. Recently, my coworker and I were at the store commenting about the fellow and things became weird. The fridge door opened on its own, the store alarm went off randomly, and I felt a tingling stroke on my arm. Then the sensation got greater and it was like it was trying to overtake me. I literally ran out to the store scared, totally embarrassing. Other employees have expressed the feeling of being watched. Yesterday, I was at work alone in the walk-in freezer, pulling product, floor to ceiling shelves. I got the box I needed and turned to leave. I took one step and suddenly two very large heavy boxes fell off the top shelf and missed hitting me in the head by two inches. I would have been knocked out for sure, in the freezer where it was minus 23 degrees. My coworker wasn't due to arrive for another four hours. The shelves are deep, the boxes were secure. I always make a point of doing a visual check when I first go in there. I have told whatever it is to go to the light. Thank you, Poltergeist movie. But given what I experienced yesterday, I think I've really pissed it off. It is common to work alone and I'm really scared about what could possibly happen next shift. I tried a protective white light visualization meditation before work yesterday. Obviously, it didn't work. The first time this experience happened, me and my boyfriend were both laying in bed in my bedroom. It was nighttime, probably around 10 o'clock. There were three knocks on my door. We stopped and waited thinking it was my mom wanting to come in and ask something. But no one came in, and no one said a word. I called out to her thinking that she might have just been waiting for me to say she should come in, but she didn't respond. Even if she knocked just to leave it, I'd be able to hear her moving around upstairs, as currently we have no carpets on the landing. And even with carpets on our bedroom floors, some of the boards lift when you walk on them. We played it off as just a weird experience that had to just be my mom. Then the times afterwards of experiencing the same thing have always been in the early morning when it's still dark. I'm a heavy sleeper, mouth open, drooling. You aren't waking me up. I also sleep with a big floor fan on all nights to just keep me in the deepest sleep possible. The second time I heard the same knocks again, in text, I can only describe the pattern as being knock, 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 and always seemingly coming from the top of my door. You can tell where about someone hits my bedroom door, as the top is more solid and the bottom sounds more hollow. The knocks woke me up and I sat there staring at the door, again thinking my mum wanted to come in, but no one did. I shook my boyfriend asking him if he heard it. He's just looking at me all dazed because I just pulled him out of his sleep, and the knocks happen again. He shoots out of bed to the door to see who's there, but when he opens it, there's no one. After a few times of this happening, I went to my mum to ask her if it was her. She said no, so I told her that if it was and she was just playing around, to please stop because it was freaking me out. But she was adamant that it wasn't her. At this point, I didn't believe it was her anyway. She's very much of a knock and enter type of person, completely defeating the point of knocking in the first place, or just shouting my name and waiting for me to come to her instead. I've brought this up with a few of my friends and I've gotten these possible reasons. It's the wind. It's a rat. None of these seem plausible to me. I've heard my door move with the wind when the windows are open. It's more of a rattle where you can hear my door hinges and handle move as well. I've never heard of a rat knocking. I can confidently say there are no rats in the house, coincidentally. My brother works in pest control. And even if hypothetically there was a rat, there's absolutely no way of it getting to the top of my door. I have no idea how to interpret the knocking. All I know is that it makes me feel uncomfortable. From what I know, don't positive paranormal entities not want you to be afraid? And aren't knocks in three? Or just the number three in general a negative thing? So this experience happened quite a few years ago. I was at my aunt's house along with my aunt, her husband, her daughter, her husband, and her two kids. So quite a little audience. They were all sat in the living room and asked me to go get paper from upstairs. On my way back down the stairs, I was stopped in my tracks by this loud noise 
They seemed to come from everywhere. It sounded like horns coming from the sky or a heavy metal gate being pulled open, but coming from every direction. After about maybe a minute, the noise stopped. I went into the living room to ask them if they heard that, just to ask what they thought it might have been, but none of them heard it. Note, I'll try and visualize the layout of where they were in comparison to me. If you come in the front door, the stores are straight on the left, and just across from the staircase is the door to the living room where they sat, with the hall in the middle. Not a chance that with a noise that loud that none of them heard it. I've searched this up on YouTube before to see if anyone caught it on camera, and they did. It seemed to happen at random points across the world, with scientists saying it was plates under the sea moving. But there was just something so weird about it, and I won't lie, I'm hella skeptical about it being plates under the sea. I'm open to pretty much anything, science, God, aliens, but being so open to any possibility sometimes just makes me incapable of leaving things alone, because I just can't make my mind up of what it is. I've lived in my house for about three years. Nothing out of the norm has ever happened. Although, there were a few weird occurrences when I first moved in. Basement door locking by itself, finding an old dusty horseshoe hanging over the basement entrance door that I'm pretty sure wasn't there when I first moved in. Little gifts being left on my porch. There were probably squirrels or weirdos, etc. But I mostly ignored these and was able to rationalize these occurrences away. Any potential strangeness was quickly forgotten and stopped. So yesterday, I'm just spending a lazy Sunday at home. I'd gotten a bouquet from someone because of a death in the family, so I spent the morning propagating the roses and making rose water. So I'm just hanging around, cleaning a bit, watching TV a little, and in and out of my kitchen making the rose water. At two points during the morning slash day, I distinctly remember hearing the sound of glass breaking. The first time, I remember thinking that the mason jar I'd put the rose water in must have cracked because the water was still too hot. I got up, looked at the jar, saw it wasn't broken, and then just forgot about it. The second time, I yelled at my cat, chopping, thinking he just jumped onto the kitchen counter and knocked something over. I looked over, but he wasn't in the kitchen. My living room, where I was in the kitchen area, are in the same open space. After both occurrences, I just completely forgot, ignored the noise, and just went about whatever I was doing. I also remember having the thought that maybe some dishes in my sink had shifted, if that makes sense, and banged together. The sound wasn't exactly like a glass falling and shattering, but more like cracking. So last night, I jump into the shower after a workout. I'm just doing my thing when the same glass breaking slash cracking sound happens again, but this time it's right next to me. Like, right next to my ear and very clear and loud. There's absolutely no way this sound could have come from outside my shower. Obviously, I look around me and nothing is disturbed. I'm literally grabbing every bottle and item I have in there and tapping them together and on the tile, but nothing reproduces the noise I heard. There's no way I imagined this. It wasn't until I heard the noise in the shower that I really registered what had happened earlier in the day and that the same noise had happened twice before. After my father's death, I would sometimes hear what I call memory sounds. Him calling my name, him moving around in the kitchen in their house when I was at their house alone. But I always sort of knew these were happening in my head, or at least originating in my head. It would feel like I actually heard something, but then a second later, I'd realized I imagined it, or heard it in my head, not externally. Not sure if I'm describing that right, and I hope I'm not sounding like a crazy person. This was not a memory sound. There was a legit glass breaking noise. I'm positive I didn't imagine this or create it as I did with my father. What is this? And why is it happening now when I've been living there for three years and this has never happened before? I mentioned above that a family member had just died, but we weren't close enough where I think he'd come to visit me, if that makes sense. I'm incredibly sad and heartbroken, but it's not the type of deep set grief I've experienced with other deaths, my father for one. So I'm not losing my marbles. About two nights ago, my sister ran to the room of my deceased great-grandmother 
She made us let her in and she ran straight to an old photo of my grandma, her siblings, his kids and her parents. We asked her which one my great grandmother was as a joke and she pointed straight to her, thinking it was just a coincidence. We asked which one my grandma was. Again, she pointed straight to her, hoping for another coincidence. We asked which one my great aunt was. She pointed straight to her again. So then we asked about my great grandfather and once again she pointed straight to him. Not to mention, she has never met my great grandmother because she passed not too long after my sister was born. And she was too young to remember my great aunt who she met once as like a one month old. And my great grandfather passed before even I was born. And it's creepy that she could identify her and my grandmother as children. She also kept randomly leaning into the photo and kissing them, mostly my great grandmother. Knowing that babies, she's one and a half, can see ghosts, we asked if my great grandmother was in the room. She said yes and kept pointing at the bathroom and repeating her name. Once we let her in the bathroom, she kept giggling at air. We thought this was kind of creepy and not to mention, earlier that day, me and my cousin had a random urge to rummage through her closet where we found old photos and notes etc. Of, of and from her and other family. I wonder if she was there telling us we should look through her closet, reminding us she was there and maybe my sister actually was seeing her. My friend and I, who I'll refer to as Q, were bored on a Thursday afternoon in January 2019. Naturally, as all teenagers do, we decided to create a Ouija board to see if the whole hype around them was true. We assembled the board on a piece of cardboard we found in Q's recycling bin and followed a wiki how tutorial on how to make a Ouija board. With everything set up, we began the process. We asked the standard questions that everyone asks, i.e. is anyone there, etc. We weren't having much luck, and just as, we, as soon as we were about to throw the board away, we finally got a response to our previous question. The planchet, which we use as a magnifying glass for, slowly slid over to yes. I called Q out on this bullshit, but he swears to this day he didn't move it. We kept asking questions, but we were getting very cryptic responses, mostly scrambled letters and such. Also, the planchet was moving very slowly at this time, taking around five seconds to transfer between letters and numbers. This all changed when we asked, where did you die? The planchet quickly started rotating between the letters XZ, XZ, XZ. Hugh looked at me with his face white as a sheet. I asked the question, how did you die? And it quickly moved over to a sequence of numbers. 1080808080. Starting to get spooked, we closed the session and burned the board. Nothing bad or paranormal has happened to us since that day. I tried to research the numbers and letters a few days after the session, but nothing showed up. This experience has always been nagging my mind every once in a while. This morning, my mother went out and when she came back, her bed was hella wet. She thought that I did it. I didn't. All of her clothes and shoes too. There weren't any signs from where the water could have come from. The ceiling wasn't wet either. This has been happening for a while now. The events have been really problematic for me and my family. Some of them that have been happening are the current... My cat getting scared and hissing at nothing. My mother, brother and grandmother seeing something taking my form. It alternates between a full representation of myself or a shadow type thing. A small little thing running and hiding behind the furniture. When I go to check, there's nothing. It isn't a rat or a mouse. A small dog and a big black dog appearing when someone is left alone. Strange growling at night. Sleep paralysis. Last time that I suffered from this, I could hear a lot of voices and I could feel like something was trying to break something inside me. A lot of strange shadows. Sometimes we can feel a really heavy atmosphere in the living room. To start, months ago, I heard my brother's signature allergy sniffle in our empty house. I was home alone and thought he was there. So when I heard it, I went to go find him because I wanted to ask him something. 
There was no one. He was at my grandmother's house. The weird thing about the sound was that I couldn't place where it had come from. It almost seemed displaced or something. I don't know. A few days ago, I heard my sister call me. She has a very recognisable voice and tone, so I thought I knew what I was hearing. I went to go see what she wanted and she was really confused. And she's not the type to joke or prank. She just doesn't do that. Today, I was sitting in my room with my door shut when she came in asking me what I wanted. I was confused myself, so I asked what she meant. She said she heard me say a name. When I told her that I hadn't, she got freaked out. She told me later when we were talking about it that she has also heard my brother's signature sniffles when she was alone in the house, or when it was just her and my dad. He doesn't make that sound. Both me and my sister have also heard what sounds like two people having a hushed, whispered conversation in our rooms in the middle of the night. Both of us wake up weirdly alert and clear-minded, so this struck as very real. When I heard it in my room, I bolted upright in bed and then heard like a quick shh before it went completely silent. So unnerving. That's about it for the mysterious sounds. Now we get into the shadow things both me and my sister have seen. The first time I recall either of us mentioning it was when one time, my sister was watching me run up our hallway from the kitchen with a movie we were going to watch. And behind me, there was a black translucent figure running after me. She didn't see where it disappeared to because at some point you lose visibility from where she was sitting. I was super freaked out. To explain this next one, on our windows is some kind of film that becomes reflective at night if a light is on. I was up late doing the dishes one night looking at my reflection in the window in front of me when all of a sudden this tall greyish figure behind me ran past the kitchen entrance and out of sight. It didn't compute at first, so I walked into the living room where it went, thinking I saw my family or some shit. No, just the dark living room because everyone was in bed asleep. The most recent time I recall seeing anything like this was just last month. I'd come out of my room and from my sister's room down the hall saw this thing leaning out of the doorframe and looking my way. It wasn't black, but some weird grey colour with small eyes barely visible. The facial, facial features were blurred. It just looked so weird. It really scared me then. I actually saw it. Ducked back into my sister's room. I didn't blink or anything. The experience was probably only a second long. The thing was about my height, if that gives any detail. To add though, my house is not old, nor has anyone lived in there before us. My parents built it. A friend of mine is in a bad relationship. A couple of weeks ago, while there was another couple at their house, she began screaming, scratching herself, and by all accounts, began speaking gibberish all while in bed. She gets picked up by the ambulance and rushed to the hospital. She then goes home and an hour or so later, drives to the hospital again, not feeling well. She's there through the night, then shows up the next day, trying to take one of their children with her. There's four. She walked from the hospital to their house and left the car there. It's a short distance, but not close enough to be an easy or a comfortable walk. Her boyfriend didn't let her take the child and was unnerved when he saw that the car wasn't outside. She was then in the hospital for about two weeks and made it to where no one could go see her. She didn't have any way to communicate with anyone because she left her phone at home. Once she got out, she's discharged with medication that she has to take for new conditions for her already bad health. Apparently she had a heart attack and stroke. She's only 28. Before all this being around her was carefree and easy. Now it's like it's something pretending to be her. Menacing, negative. That's the only thing I can think to describe it. For about a month or so, she's been experiencing weird things in her home. Things I had witnessed on occasion. Like toys on top of the fridge lighting up. A bubble gun showing bubbles in her kitchen with no person around. She believed that this was her deceased son who died roughly four years ago, a day or two after he was born. She's a practicing witch. She doesn't classify herself as a, any particular one. She's been drawing odd things outside her home in no seemingly orderly manner and talking about how she'd let her son's presence when she practiced. 
I've seen her alter before. It was very positive and well cheery. In addition to herself giving off a menacing vibe, her alter now just feels wrong. Like it's tainted or something. Being in the house now is pretty much unbearable and conversing with her doesn't feel like a conversation anymore. It feels like something is trying to act like her and gather information. What's everyone's thoughts? Basically, I've had experiences where people I'm close to get an injury or sickness, and I experience it too. It's happened enough to where I wonder what is going on. I'll give three examples, though I do have a few more. One was when my sister broke her arm. My arm started getting sore and hurt really bad for like two days before I found out she'd broken her arm. She lives in another state and we don't talk often, so it took some time before I found out. My arm stayed sore for a few more days. I didn't bother going to the doctor. Another example was when my foot hurt so bad I could barely walk. I went to the doctor and they found nothing wrong with me. I came to find out my aunt had slipped on some ice and broke her ankle, which is where the pain in my foot was coming from. Again, I didn't find out for a few days after it happened and the pain started the same day as her injury. The best example, and I think the strangest, is this. My brother-in-law got an infection that almost killed him. I don't talk to him or my other sister all that much, so I didn't know about it. But I had the same symptoms that he had and went to the doctor about it. The symptoms? My testicles swelled up to the size of, well, maybe a grapefruit. It freaked me out and the doctor, though not finding anything wrong with me, gave me some water pills to help with the swelling. My brother-in-law had the same thing happen, only he almost died. I found out about it when he went to the hospital, days after the symptoms started. Let me start off by saying that I have OCD. I get intrusive thoughts sometimes, some are really stupid, others are creepier. But regardless, I'm usually able to push them away or rationalise them. But a recent experience terrified me and I'm not sure what to think. My parents were away for a few days, and so I was watching the house for them. There was no one else in the house. I was laying in my parents' bed, just watching the afternoon sun pouring through the window as the curtains moved softly. I never get to sleep in that late, so it was nice to just have a day with my dogs lying beside me. Suddenly, without warning, I had this distinct vision or image in my head of a tall man in boots, jeans, and a jean jacket standing behind my fence. His hair was a fiery orange and his eyes were pale blue. I can't describe why, but the image really creeped me out. It was like he could see me and he was glaring at me. The exact moment I had this image in my head, my dog's head snapped toward the window and started barking like crazy. Now, at this point, I'm suddenly terrified and I hesitantly get out of bed and slowly peek out the window. There's nothing. The yard is completely empty. I gave a sigh of relief and lay back down and closed my eyes, trying to get my heart rate back to normal. I was, it was just my OCD being a jerk. Then, suddenly I get another image in my head, but this time he's standing between the windows and the curtains, smiling at me. My eyes snap open and I see both of my dogs now locked on the spot where I imagined he was. One of my dogs gave a low growl. I noped the hell out of there and did something else for the rest of the day. I still get images in my head of the orange haired man from time to time. The name that popped into my head one time was Roy, so I just think of him as Roy. Sometimes I imagine him in the shower or in my room, but in college I don't have any dogs, so the experience hasn't repeated in the exact way. I've never truly seen him, only imagined him in places, but he always looks the same. So I have no idea what the hell happened that day, but it was one of the scariest things to ever happen to me. I don't know if it was just an intrusive thought that I had and my dogs just happened to bark at that exact moment, or it's something more sinister going on. But imaginary or not, Roy terrifies me. For background, I got this excellent job last month after leaving my awful ex-employer, which frees me from the 996 schedule 
for people who haven't heard about this, it means work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. Everything is perfect, except that the IT departments I work for located really far away from my departments. And I have to transfer from subway line one to line nine, then to line 16 to get there. Thanks for my great manager, usually I could stay in another department's office, which is much closer. But because of this COVID-19 situation, we're required to work in our own office from last week. And that means now I have to take this long subway line one, line nine, line 16 trip and go to the super far IT office every day. Last Wednesday. Except the super long commute time, I don't really hate this daily subway trip. And all thanks to that extremely cool tunnel in the line nine, line 16 interchange station, also known as National Library Station. I even started enjoying taking the subway now. Unlike those ones built in the 90s, this recently built tunnel is much more spacious and well decorated by tons of LED lights and smooth marbles with specular gloss. I will say it's the king of the transfer tunnel among all the Beijing subway stations. But last Wednesday, things are kind of different. When I transfer from line nine to line 16, I don't think I have passed this shiny tunnel during the whole trip that morning. I noticed this difference so clearly because walking in that cool shining tunnel has become my favorite part in daily subway travel. I could still remember how I was expecting to wander around in that tunnel. However, there's no impression that I have passed through it. When I finally got to my office that day, this weird feeling still suffused in my mind and kicked every work related things out. As far as I know, this tunnel should be the only access when transferring between these two subway lines in that station. That whole day, I kept trying to recollect how I got to line 16 in the morning after leaving the line nine platform. And as a result, some dim memory pieces about another tunnel flashed back. I recalled such a picture that instead of my favorite tunnel, I was walking in a much narrower and darker tunnel and squeezed by the crowded passengers moving slowly to the next platform. That tunnel looks like those ones in the 90s built stations and even older. The lighting feels like it's from some aging fluorescent tube rather than LED lights. I think LED lights are supposed to be more commonly used nowadays, like in my favorite tunnel, compared to those old school fluorescent lights. The passengers that morning in that narrow tunnel were abnormally crowded. I kept getting pushed by the stream of people and passed that tunnel without stopping. Sitting in the office and thinking about it again, I've never seen such a tunnel in that station before. And actually, I have to say, an old tunnel like that doesn't really match well with a newly settled subway station like the National Library Station. It feels so weird. And even now, I could still feel that cold and wet air in that strange tunnel by just recalling those pieces of memories. I wish it's just that sleepy morning made me get the wrong impression. Um, I think similar things happened to me again on last Friday and this Monday. I guess I'll talk about that tomorrow during my long commute. Now it's time to walk to my cutest dog in the world. Last Friday. I decided to take that Wednesday weird experience as a memory, mistake last week. Until similar thing happened when I was transferring from subway line 9 to line 16 last Friday. There's another place I usually pay more attention to when transferring to line 16 in National Library Station. It's a stair facing a wall decorated with this funny calligraphy writing. Wish I could translate it rightly. It means, diligence is the only way to climb the mountain of book. This calligraphy looks funny for me because the characters are written like they were cut in the middle and spared into two pieces. For example, the character looks like on that wall. Last Friday, after passing through my favorite tunnel, I was considering about taking another look at the calligraphy wall when walking downstairs to see if the calligraphy artist had signed his or her name on the interesting work. And just like last Wednesday, I don't think I've seen that wall when walking down to line 16. I knew there were two stairs leading to line 16 next to each other in that area, and the one with the funny calligraphy should be the first one when you come from line nine. But I'm pretty sure I didn't use the other stair in that morning because I was almost late for work that day. I didn't want to waste time walking to the next stairs rather than using the first one. Also, those stairs feel somehow different compared to the other stairs and subway stations. It's too simple. People who have lived in Beijing may know that, except stations of the oldest lines like line one and line two, 
All the stations settled after 2007 are kind of over-decorated for the 2008 Olympics. And this design pattern has been well passed on when building other subway stations after 2008. So a stair surrounded by such simple walls without shining lights or marbles is not that common in Line 9 or Line 16. There's no obvious decoration on the walls surrounding the stairs in my memory. Instead, they are just white, painted and kind of dyed by dust, which makes their colour looks more pale and kind of grey. Those water stains creeping on the walls from the sailing reminded me about the damp tunnel on Wednesday. Unlike that crowded tunnel, there are some passengers passing the stairs, but not that many, which is a bit abnormal for morning rush time on weekdays. It's in my impression, it was not as uncomfortable when passing that simple stairs as walking in that narrow tunnel, but still, the moist walls and coldness I felt kept reminding me about my Wednesday experience in that tunnel. And when I think back, the memory pieces about the stairs are also clearer and more recallable compared to that dim picture on Wednesday.